Hey everybody, BTO Pro here, and today I'm going to show you how to get started with OpenWC, a really nice way to work and build lit-based web components. At the end of this, we're going to have this published out to Vercel, and by the end of this, it really shouldn't take very long, thanks to how nice this boilerplate works and how well it works with OpenWC. So let's get started. I have a GitHub repo here. It is Polaris Chip. It's just the name of this boilerplate. And I'm going to go run git clone. You can see I've done that here. Let's do it again. It says, oh, hey, that already exists. So I'm not going to go step into this repository, uh, but I have the boilerplate there. And I'm going to go to OpenWC, hit follow guide. And you'll see there's npm init at OpenWC. Now, if you haven't installed before, you're going to need to install npm. You can get that from Node.js or get Node.js installed, it comes with npm, and you should be up to speed then. So I'm going to run this command, npm init at open hyphen wc, and we're going to get asked a question, do you want to scaffold a new project or upgrade an existing? So I'm going to go with scaffold a new project as I'm starting from nothing. I'm going to pick application. The way OpenWC works, you could build a standalone web component, but if you pick an application and then build a standalone web component into it, it's just going to make for a smoother user experience when getting out to Vercel. For the purposes of what I'm doing, I just, because a lot of times I make these videos and these boilerplate repos for my students in class, linters are super painful for newbies uh, to get started with the web and coding in general. So for right now, I'm going to turn that off. And I'll turn, turn these on. Now, in order to work with this, I'm pushing the arrow keys up and down. If you've never used a, uh, a terminal prompt that asks uh, optional questions, and then I'm hitting the space bar. Once I've done those, I hit enter. Do you want to use TypeScript? I don't like using TypeScript, so no. And then what is this shell going to be called? Now, I'm going to name it the same thing as this Git repo here, this Polaris chip. So P hyphen chip. And it's going to say, hey, we're going to write all these files of disk. Let's look what that looks like, right? So Polaris chip, it's going to go into that folder and write all these things for you. Sure. And do we want to install the dependencies? Sure, why not? So that's going to run NPM to install the initial dependencies. Now, let's look at what Vercel, Vercel looks like. I'll go over off my Pro account and switch over to BTO Pro and get that side of it set up. So I'm going to do add new and project. Whoops, not new project. Silly me. I'm going to do um, add new project. Ah, there we go. Import Git repo. Didn't have enough coffee today. Import from Git repository. So five minutes ago, this Polaris chip repo existed. I'm going to hit import. It's not really going to do anything. There's nothing there yet. But while NPM is running in the background, we we'll do this. Now, with OpenWC, this is very important to get your code to build successfully on Vercel. You're going to expand the build and output settings. We're going to click output directory and check this override button. Here, we're going to type DIST for dist, or distribution. What is distributed to other people? So I'm going to hit deploy. And when I first deploy, I shouldn't get anything. Yeah, it's like, hey, this doesn't have anything in it. <laughs> so might have to actually wait a second here. So let's see if NPM finished. Okay. So it says CD Polaris chip after the install and then NPM run start. And we should get that. We just get this little spinny logo thing. So let's try to get our spinny logo OpenWC thing out there. So I'm going to hit control C that cancels the current execution there. Uh, get status. We see we have a bunch of files and so get add space hyphen a get commit m initial open wc boilerplate get push origin main. All right. So just to verify up on Polaris chip. Okay, we've got our boilerplate. And now let's try to deploy from Vercel. Polaris chip already exists. It didn't, apparently didn't like that I uh, clicked that button prior to. Okay, so there's Polaris chip. 
it is apparently building. So it did set it up. It just complained about it. <laughs> so we'll see what happens when this goes to finish here in a moment. No production deployments. Should be one. There we go. All right. Hey, there we go. Okay. So I have polaris -chip .vercel app. I click to that. We see our little spinny logo. So it says edit src polaris chip.js and save to reload. And nice work going off to some code samples. So let's modify that just very quickly. Right, so I'm going to open this up in VS Code. Code editor of choice. Drag that over. All right. We can see in this OpenWC repo, um, typically going to be working with three files here. So I've got index.html. We can see there's a nice stamp out of Polaris hyphen chip, the tag in question for our app. And then we've got script type module. So if you're not familiar with web components, the typical way that you build web components is you reference an entryway. All right, so then let's trace that. That's src polaris hyphen chip.js. And in this case, there's gonna be some call to binding a tag, a new HTML tag in the browser. So binding that definition to a class, right? So the way that OpenWC ends up putting this out as far as it being an application is that it keeps these definitions abstracted, right? So we have the class Polaris chip is abstracted from this window.customelements.define. That way, if you wanted to repurpose the Polaris chip in an environment that didn't have a window, like a node app, you could. Now, I don't personally build things that way, but that's why it's abstracted that way. So if we look at Polaris ship camel case here, this is the code that's making up our little spinny logo. So what I like to do is I'll take this, <clears throat> throw it off to the left, and then let's open another window here and I'll do npm start. All right, so I get Polaris in one window. I get my working environment over here. And then I'll usually also open the three files in question so that I can close the file explorer. That way I can just skip between them pretty easily. Also to save time, I just mental model, I go, okay, this file is the demonstration. It's what I'm seeing over here, right? So I should be able to copy and paste Polaris chip like 10 times and we get four, well, four times and we get four Polaris chips. This is the idea with web components. We're making new HTML tags that we can repurpose over and over again. So I'll just do the one. We look in Polaris chip. All right. That binds the definition. Probably not going to have to modify that. All right. And now I don't necessarily need the spinning logo. Interesting little aside here as far as this logo. It's const logo, which is global, right? So it's outside of this class. And this is the way when we're doing modern JavaScript with import resolution that we include a static asset. We say new URL and then a relative path to that static asset. In this case, it's over in assets, right? There's the OpenWC logo, SVG, comma, import.meta.url. This is something new as of ES6, which has been around for quite a while. Um, and then .href. This helps the browser on the front end resolve and know relative to this file where this other thing is. It also helps our bundler, in this case, rollup is what's used by, um, by OpenWC, in order to do the asset resolution so that when we build these files, they can be deployed successfully because it knows to go and include this file because it's being imported in this manner. Now I'm gonna take out this logo, save and the whole, whole application's broken and the whole application's broken because logos reference places so usually what i end up doing initially when i have a boilerplate is i distill this down into right we've got title we've got um, some initial styling um, i'm actually going to reduce the initial styling to just like display block um an initial title my boilerplate because all we're trying to do is get to just a little label there and then I step into the render method. Now this is not OpenWC code, this is lit. So if you go to lit.dev, you can read the documentation on lit element to get in the weeds with it. Extremely simple to use user experience. I love developing with lit. I would do it with or without OpenWC. So it makes it very easy to delete 
these aspects of it. I'm actually just going to make a span, and that is literally what I was going to write. I was just going to have a little span there to start that just binds a title. So we at least have something. And this is my boilerplate. Now, the awesome thing, in this case with web components, is even with that little tiny thing, now I've got a reusable chip. All right, I can put three of them on the page. Well, let's do two of them on the page. And then this one, we're going to say title equals cool stuff. And so what's happening is if I right click, pull this up, right? Our Polaris chip has a shadow root. And the shadow root means that we can enca encapsulate the functionality um, visually as well as the JavaScript running here. Now, I'm not doing anything fancy with the JavaScript in this video. It's just for boilerplating. But the span, and this is where Lit comes in, it's part of why Lit is so powerful as far as its performance, is Lit is using a uh, the template literal syntax, the thing that you see here. All right, let me put that on one line so it's a little more readable. Okay, so it's passing in or running template literal syntax, but it's calling the HTML method in this case, that's come from here, function, whatever class coming from there. So it's gonna run this function HTML and it's gonna pass this in. Now, fun thing with eight, with template literals, this, the back tick on your keyboard, is that actually assumes there's a baseline function running. And so what lit ends up doing is it says, hey, there's a placeholder here for a variable. It keeps track of that internally to say, oh, that value changed. Notice that that value changed. And just pinprick the text node directly after the placeholder that I left. So it's keeping track of these references, these little teeny tiny pieces of DOM. And by doing that with the little tiny pieces of DOM, it's able to update things extremely rapidly, no matter how many items are on the page. Way faster than a traditional virtual DOM. If you've not heard of Web Components or you say, why am I getting into this now? Interestingly enough, Screencastify, which is what I'm using right now, here is shown with a Web Component housing and a shadow root, right? They're able to inject, in this case, the editing experience into the page. I've got my little um, picture of me here in this window. So I've got my update boilerplate thing, right? And it just says my boilerplate and cool stuff. We're going to do display block, and this is all I was going to do for this one. Make sure all our files are saved. All right. We can go and close down our terminal environments. All right. And then another way that I like to test whether or not something's going to work on Vercel is there's two steps to this. So I'll do npm run build. And this is effectively what Vercel is doing. Vercel is just cloning my code, running install, running build, and then looking for this directory right there, this dist folder, because I told it, hey, that's where the output of the whole site is, is in that build folder, that dist folder. So if I can successfully run a build locally, I know it's probably gonna work. I can also run Vercel dev. Would you like to set up and develop a Polaris chip? Yep. Uh, my project's already there. Found a project link to it, yep. And what this is going to do is effectively run the exact same process that happens when it goes out the door. And so if I can get this to look right, which it does, I had to do a super refresh because I do a lot of development with this. Um, I've got that working there. That means when I push my code up to GitHub, it should give me that exact same output. So I'm going to cancel execution, get status. We'll see that our... Um, um, initial boilerplate complete origin main. We'll see that it didn't reference the dist folder. And that's because our git ignore is ignoring putting that in version control. And by ignoring node modules and the dist folder, when this goes up, you see it's already building here. When this goes up to Vercel to build, it's able to take fresh copies of both of those. So that once it gets the dist folder, it apparently is already done. Do a super refresh. There we go. So now we're out the door. This is the end-to-end -end workflow um, that we've established using Vercel and OpenWC with Lit to build 
web components. We're able to rapidly prototype things using this approach. If you need to learn more about dev, I, or sorry, about lit, I highly recommend going to lit.dev, going to the tutorial section there, or open-wc.org. It has uh, nice tutorials, ways you should set up your IDE to get more in the weeds. And also, if for some reason you're interested in why we make uh, videos of this nature and are trying to teach people web components, I suggest you check out either hacks, hax.psu.edu or hacksthewweb.org or follow us on the many socials that we're on. We use web components in a radically different way in which we've made an editing experience made of web components that understands how to author other web components, effectively transforming the authoring experience for all websites. Have a nice day. Happy web componenting.